you know, I understand that Argentina has now uh, come to an agreement with the IMF to refinance their dollar loans. I don't know the terms. I'd like to know what those are so I could comment on those. Uh, uh, but number two, more important for this conversation is that those terms include uh, tightening up on fiscal policy. I don't know, again, the details on how tight and uh, raising domestic interest rates, peso interest rates. So what I'd like to do is say categorically that raising the peso interest rates uh, adds to inflation and makes it worse. It causes more government spending to go towards interest expense, which is totally uh, demand side. There's no supply side to that. And it is highly regressive. You're, you're increasing your peso deficit spending and it's going to pe only to people who already have money. You only earn interest if you already have money. And in proportion to how much money you have, the more money you have, the more you get from the government. So the government of Argentina, when it increases rates, when the central bank increases rates, the only thing that happens operationally is that it pays more interest on the public debt. Some of it's short term, it's the interest rates will go up immediately. Some of it takes a while to mature, but the interest rates go up on the entire public debt over time. And it's understood that rates will be higher. Uh, and so savers have the uh, advantage, lenders have the advantage of knowing that they are getting higher rates as, as uh, investments mature and come due. So all of that contributes to uh, aggregate demand and puts upward pressure on prices. But it, again, it does it in the most regressive manner. So I would categorically be against agreeing to that as a way to fight inflation, to keep inflation down. First thing I would do would be immediately go to a zero rate policy like Japan has, like the European Union has, uh, like the Federal Reserve had until yesterday when it raised rates to a quarter of a percent, something again, I would not have done. But the problem is all these central banks are doing it uh, for the wrong reason. They're doing it because they think it causes inflation and they've been trying to cause inflation with low rates. The fact is the data shows that the low rates promote low inflation. So if you look at Japan for the last 30 years, they've been trying as hard as they can to create inflation. They've had a zero rate policy. They've had quantitative easing, buying back all the government securities. So it's all short term. Okay. And they've failed. They haven't, at least until recently, they haven't even gotten to the 2% target. The Federal Reserve up until recently, when we had the COVID disruptions, same thing. They tried as hard as they could to create inflation and failed. The European Union, has even gone to negative rates. Everything they can do, everything the central bank can do to create inflation and fail. What I'm saying is those are not the tools to create inflation. And in fact, they have it backwards. Uh, I call a positive interest rate policy as basic income. Yeah. And paying out more money, throwing gasoline on the fire, it's not extinguishing the fire. And the reason I'll go, further and say that the reason Japan has had uh, such low inflation for 30 years is because they've had a zero rate. The lower, the zero rate has been a deflationary bias. It was a deflationary bias in the United States and the negative rates and even larger deflationary bias in the European Union, which has had much lower inflation than the United States. Uh, and central bank policy is kind of, I compared it to the uh, carpenter with a piece of wood where he says, no matter how much I cut off, it's still too short. Okay, the European Union was, no matter how much we cut rates, you know, we still can't get inflation. Japan, no matter how much we cut rates, you know, the deflation gets worse. Well, of course it does. That's what's causing it. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about is they're using, they're trying to use unemployment to fight inflation, which also is not particularly effective. Uh, and it's absolutely the wrong thing to do because it, it's not the source of the inflation and it's not... Um, it affects your real wealth. So by causing you to tighten up Argentina, to tighten up on fiscal policy, to either raise taxes or cut spending. By the way, they're going to have to raise taxes and cut spending more because of the increased spending on interest that's also required by the IMF. So number one, they require them to increase spending on interest and at the same time cut total spend. So the total deficit is going to have to come down uh, proactively. They're going to have to enact policies that do that. Okay, so to, what those policies do is they reduce aggregate demand, they reduce people's ability to buy things, 
They slow down the private sector to the point where they create recessions and people lose their jobs. That's what slowing down means. And so your real private sector output is less than it would have been otherwise. The real wealth is your pile of stuff. That's everything you produce domestically, plus what you import, minus what you export. Most of it, or majority of it, comes from what you produce domestically. You produce the most domestically at full employment where everybody's working. You got a bigger pile of stuff. You have more real wealth. Okay, so number one, the IMF is causing you to reduce that real wealth. Any problems with inflation or anything else are distributional problems, but you don't want to reduce your real wealth to address, address a distributional problem. It can't be anything but a distributional problem if your pile of real wealth is still there. Okay, so the other thing that happens is your real terms of trade add to your pile. That is imports minus exports. Imports make your pile larger. Exports make your pile smaller. The difference is called your real terms of trade. The IMF is asking you to reduce your real terms of trade. They want you to import less and export more. Your pile of stuff will be smaller. And so you're losing real wealth in two ways. One way through reduced domestic employment and output. The other way through reduced real terms of trade based on their uh, required, their trade requirements. Okay, so uh, I think I've covered my 10 minutes as an introduction and I look forward to getting into this with more depth with all of you. Thank you.